Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're gonna to give everyone a couple minutes to sign on, but we wanted to go ahead and get started so that we could welcome you all here today and also launch a poll um, to help us gauge what area you're most excited to hear about and learn about today. So we'll give you all just another couple of minutes to um, sign on. And in the meantime, I will go ahead and get that poll launched. So take just a minute and answer the question, which is which of the five areas um, do you need the most improvement with in your own marketing strategy? So you can choose your top two. And um, I just wanted to note that we will be um, going through some slides to start, and then we will be doing a open laptop style presentation with where Sean will be opening up um, the Y charts tool and showing you a little bit about how to use it and how to pull really great visuals for your marketing materials. And then I will be showing you how to take those visuals and add them into your social media, your uh, email and other drip campaigns via the lead pilot tool. So you'll get to see both and how the two can be used together really seamlessly. Um, so make sure you stick around for that. If you're just joining us, we're asking you to answer a poll that you should see on your screen. We'll be getting started in just a minute. So please take a moment to answer that. Okay, it is now three o'clock. So welcome everyone who is officially here. And for those of you still just joining, um, thank you so much for being here today. Please take a moment to just answer the poll that you see on your screen and we'll be getting started in just one minute. A uh, few housekeeping items. We will be recording today's presentation and sending everyone who registered both the recording and the slide deck. So if you have to take a phone call, you get distracted uh, for some reason, don't worry, you'll get all of the materials that you need after the fact. Um, but please stick around till the end because we'll be showing you an open laptop. Uh, we'll be showing you both Y charts tool as well as 20 over 10's lead pilot tool and how the two can work together to really amplify your digital presence with great visuals. So I'm going to give just another uh, minute here or so for you all to answer the poll and then we'll close it down and get started. Okay, so thank you everyone who answered it. Oops, let me just end this poll. Can't end it without getting out of a full screen here. Okay, so I'm gonna share the results with all of you. And you can see that the number one thing that people are looking for help with is social media. So we have some great tips for you all today. Sean and I were just talking actually before we signed on about uh, some of the social media tips and uh, we'll be excited to share that with you. But in a close second was email marketing. So we'll be sure to spend a little bit extra time on those two areas. All right, so let's get started. I'm just gonna turn this poll off, reshare my screen. Okay. All right. So thank you everyone again for joining. Today we're going to be talking about five new tactics to virtually engage your clients and prospects. And for those of you that uh, have never joined one of our presentations before, welcome. I'm Samantha Russell, the Chief Marketing and Business Development Officer at 20 Over 10. 20 Over 10 is a digital marketing platform for the modern advisor, and we offer a suite of tools to help you with your digital marketing and inbound marketing presence. Everything from websites to content, uh, social media scheduling, email marketing, everything you need to drive qualified leads to you. And if we haven't connected already on Twitter or LinkedIn, I please ask you right now to take a minute and go and connect with me. And that way I can see all the great content that you're posting and engage with you there. And I'm so excited to have Sean Brown from Y Charts joining me today. Sean, welcome. Sam, thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about yourself. 
Uh, as you mentioned, I lead YCharts. Uh, YCharts is a cloud-based application that does two things. One is it enables smarter investment decisions. And number two is it provides a lot of the great content for better prospect and client communications. Great. Well, we're so excited to have you here. We have seen so many advisors sharing all of these great charts on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, and I'm excited for you to share a little bit more about what you all have been up to and some of the changes you've made in the data that you've added to your platform during the pandemic. Um, so we'll get to cover all of that today. But let me just go through the agenda quick. Again, those of you just signing on, welcome. So today we're gonna talk about how you can implement visuals into your email marketing initiatives for higher open and click through rates. Again, that was the second most requested thing in that poll we just looked at. We're gonna talk about how you can leverage webinars in platforms like this in Zoom and video, how you can use visual marketing in social media posts to ensure that your content stands out. And we have some great examples um, and ideas for you just even using what is provided in the wide charts tool. And then we'll talk about best practices for visual elements to enhance your blogging efforts. Um, we have Q&A listed at the end, and of course we'll, we'll do that, but we really encourage you, we want this to be an interactive um, conversation more than a presentation. So though we will not be unmuting you if you raise your hand, we prefer that you uh, type out your question either in the Q&A box, which then any one of our panelists here today will be able to see an answer, or if you put it in the chat, then anyone can see it. So in the chat box, um, everybody who's on today will be able to see that. And joining us um, behind the scenes, we have Will Rubin from Y Charts and Amanda Larson from 20 Over 10, and they'll be answering questions live as well. So please, please submit those questions as you think of them. You don't need to wait till the end. Okay, so uh, Sean, can you start us off with this really interesting um, data that you brought here today? Yeah, so uh, last fall, uh, way before the pandemic, YCharts did a survey of advised individuals. Again, not advisors, but those that advisors serve. Um, the exact number of individuals was actually 666, and I, that number made me really skittish. So we, we've got here 650, but Agreed. we asked them a lot of questions about communications, and um, we found out a couple things. Uh, in general, clients were not feeling engaged with their advisors. Number two is uh, advised individuals wanted more personalized, more regular, more timely communication. And number three there were some serious consequences pointed out of not communicating well. And, and those were three. Number one is an advised individual is not gonna be feel good about their financial plan that the advisor created for them if they don't feel like they're getting adequate communication. Number two, the number one source of lead generation for advisors that we're familiar with is referrals. Um, if they're not feeling good about the communication they're receiving from their advisors, they are unlikely to um, refer. And the final thing is the real scary one is if you're not communicating well, uh, you may uh, lose your client. They may be listening to their friends who talk about how their advisor is communicating well. Those are some, yeah, really interesting and uh, thought provoking findings for sure. And, you know, I think one of the ones that's really interesting that we have listed out here is about pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. I've heard you know, differing opinions on this. And we would love to hear from all of you. So um, tell us in the comments, have you picked up the phone and called most of the, uh, you know, households that you work with? Have you only called those who are closer maybe to retiring or those who maybe lost more money or you know are more skittish? How did you handle communications yourself during the pandemic? Because obviously this happened or this survey was done even before um, the pandemic started. But that has been something that we've been asked a lot about. And I think it's a great opportunity with so many advisors on the line here today for us all to learn from each other. Um, you know, I think we all know our own clients best. And so the advice we always give is if you know someone who likes phone calls, then that's the people you should prioritize calling. And there's a lot of, um, you know, younger clients that would be fine. They, they're in it for the long haul. They're going to be okay. They, they know that they have time to rebound so they don't feel as skittish. Um, but age isn't always, you know, the <laughs> determination of whether someone will be more nervous or not. So uh, really interesting 
information that you you gathered here. Yeah, you know, Sam, one of the things that, that we liken the role of the advisor to now is a pilot. You know, you've got a product lead pilot. Um, we liken the advisor's role to being a pilot, which is in tumultu tumultuous time where there's turbulence, you want to hear from your pilot. You want to hear that they're aware that things are going on. You want to hear what they're doing to address the situation that they're in control. And you want to hear when that you're going to hear from them next. And so the interesting things that, that we've all seen in the last few months is this is an advisor's time to shine. Communicate now. This is what those fees are all about is, is taking the worry away from your clients. And the thing that we saw in, in our survey that's on the screen right now is please look at your clients as not a homogenous group. Like, like Sam was saying, um, they're not, their needs are not all the same. There was a big distinction between the responses we got from over 50 individuals and under 50. The, the older group tends to be okay sticking with some of the uh, communication tactics that have been previously used over the past couple decades. The new generation is saying, I, I've got a whole different way to being communicated with and start singing my song. And that includes social media, web, blogs, and, and a lot of other things. Yeah, the, the uh, difference by age is really interesting. There was a great study that was done um, last fall actually as well, where they looked at how people find an advisor and it was such a stark difference. The under 45 crowd, um, pick, they said Google was the number one way that they looked for an advisor or you know found one versus people over 45 referrals was still number one. So that tide is definitely turning. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about um, this advisor client communications framework uh, and what it means and how people should be thinking about it. Because I think it's a really nice, easy way because marketing can feel very overwhelming to help you put a framework together to think about how you want to set up your own marketing and communications. Yeah. Um, as a result of our survey, we said, how are we going to help advisors better communicate? And we said the first thing we think advisors need to do is be introspective and take a look at their practices around communication currently. And we ask them to think about it in a two by two framework where you can see the Y axis is who's the audience? Are you broadcasting something, which means uh, multiple people or to everybody? Or are you narrow casting to one or just a couple customers? So consider that framework and then consider the cadence, the X axis here. Is it something that's scheduled? It's something that you plan to do weekly, biweekly, monthly, quarterly, or annually. That's a scheduled thing if you can put it on your calendar. An ad hoc thing is something that just pops up. So we asked advisors to really think about and be introspective about these quadrants and saying, hey, you really have to have some tactics and you have to compare yourself to the best in the industry in, are you doing broadcast ad hoc things, for instance? Um, that would be a good social media thing. Hey, I have a reaction to the 10-2 yield curve spread inversion, or I wanna talk about how the COVID statistics that are on the upswing in terms of cases, how that might impact markets. That's an ad hoc broadcast thing that a lot of advisors are saying, I don't do that. Um, so take a look at these quadrants. What are you doing well? What are you not doing well? And put a plan in place to start executing a little bit better at a time. Don't think that you're going to be a master of all of these tactics and all these quadrants at once. I love that. And I think, you know, the, the ad hoc can be really challenging for people if they have to go jump through a lot of hoops with compliance. Um, but just because something is coming up and is more of a, a timely or a current event doesn't mean you can't do it at all, even if it's a day or two behind when the news came out because you're waiting for something to be approved, that's all right. And often, you know, people think they have to recreate the wheel every time. It could be something like, you know, okay, there's a huge dip in the markets. You already had a really great blog post that you wrote about the history of bull and bear markets last year. And you can repurpose that and reshare it now because it's timely and it makes sense for what's going on. And you want to reassure people that historically the market does bounce back and um, it was already approved in the past, right? So you can always look back at previous communications if compliance is a hurdle for those ad hoc pieces and think about what can you repurpose. Yeah. And I also think there would take the pressure off yourself to create all of your own content. In some cases, there are People have done a masterful uh, job of creating content themselves. And 
with a little permission or acknowledgement, um, they may be perfectly fine with you repurposing their work. Um, it, it serves your purposes of being good communication and it serves your client purposes of receiving valuable and helpful educational information. That's a great point. And that's one of the reasons why we created both the 20 over 10 content library and our lead pilot tool because the compliance teams are able to pre-review in batches the content. And so then if something happens, any of the advisors who are affiliated with those uh, broker dealers can easily just choose it and use it. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this funnel. I'm sure many of you have heard of the digital marketing funnel. And I promise after this slide, we're gonna get into really some tangible examples. But when we're thinking about all of the different messages that we're putting out there, there's usually going to be one or two areas um, of why we're putting that message out. So the on the uh, left-hand side here, you can see, are we trying to attract a, a client or a potential new prospect? Do we want to convert someone from a uh, lead into an actual prospect? Do we wanna close them from a prospect to a client? Or are we just trying to make our clients happy and give them the information that they want? And so the different activities that you will engage in as a marketer marketing your own business um, will fall into these different areas. So for instance, you would use your website and your blog and good SEO and social media to attract people to your business. And then once they're aware of you, you convert them by getting their information, having them fill out a call to action, complete a form, visit a landing page so you can track them. And once you have their information and you're able to drip on them over time, you would do that through email and drip campaigns and nurturing them by segmenting them into very specific lists. And then once they're a client, you send them specific information that you know is interesting to them based upon what you know about them as a person. So this whole entire funnel is really the, the visual you need to think about when you think about what inbound marketing is. It's attracting people at you know, the very bottom or um, you know, at a wide range and then funneling them down once the time is right using different methods. So we don't have time obviously to go into all of these today, but as people, as more and more advisors are moving from in-person events and seminars and educational events to digital means and virtual tactics, we really wanted to hone in on five specific tactics that you can use today and give you some tangible takeaways. So let's start with email. This was the second most requested um, topic in the poll that we did. And so when it comes to sending emails, um, there, we obviously talked earlier about the research that Wide Charts did. Email is still the top preferred communication strategy overall. And people, the way that they look at their inbox, a lot of people strive for inbox zero and they need to go through every single email every day. You may be one of those people, but you will get people's attention because if you show up in their inbox, they're something they have to deal with. Whether they're deleting it, they're reading it, they're responding to it you know, you, you really will get their attention that way. So if they are a client, as we saw earlier, they do want to hear from you. And email is one of the top ways that they are asking that you communicate with them. So I have an example over here on the left of an email, because many advisors we work with will say, well, what should I send? I don't have enough original content to send a new email every week. We're gonna show you some different examples of, you know, charts that you can use. Really the sky's the limit, but I think this is a really great framework if you're not sure. So this is from an advisor named Chad Chubb. His firm is called Wealth Keel. And so he sends the Wealth Keel weekly to all of his clients. Now he has a, a different version um, that's very similar, but a little different that he sends to prospects as well, who opt in. And he focuses on working with Gen X and Gen Y physicians in Philadelphia. So at the top of every, um, email, he will share one to three articles under the what we read this week. And so you can see in this, in this instance, in this example, the very first one is actually a blog post that he authored with a video from him talking about how new attending physicians can achieve financial success. And he summarizes what the key points are to make it compelling for the person to want to read it. And then he links to it, right? 
then underneath it, that's not a piece that he authored. It's something he found online that he thinks is interesting and compelling for his audience. So Trump is reportedly considering a new one trillion infrastructure stimulus plan to boost the US economy. So he summarizes it and then links to it. The really interesting takeaway is that at the bottom of every one of these emails, he does a fun side story. And sometimes it's about a DIY project. Sometimes it's about his kids and he'll have a picture. Um, you know, I'm on his email list, so I've seen he share pictures of his kids on Christmas morning and what they, their favorite presents were or when they went trick or treating or sharing a story about a DIY project. But that part of the email at the bottom is always the part that the most people will hit reply and respond to, that personal story that he's sharing. And he does this for both the prospects and the clients that he has. Both lists get that side story. So don't be afraid. And in fact, you should embrace in your emails to share personal stories and build that connection with people who are trying to get to know you. I think that part is so important that don't put the pressure on yourself that you have to be saying absolutely brilliant things about the macro economy or uh, investing. People love to get to know you. They love to know about your family. They love to know your successes and your failures and your passions. Don't miss the opportunity to personally connect with them while you're also sharing good information. Yes, you hit the nail on the head there. So we listed out some tools and some how to's that you can dive in deeper. Um, so, but number one, think about email. If you're not already in a good cadence and a good rhythm, people know when they can expect to hear from you. That's also very crucial. You can't one month send one email, the next month send three, the next month send five. You really need to get in a groove so that people know when to expect to see you in their inbox. Uh, the second tactic that we personally have been doing here at 20 over 10 for a while, I know, Sean, we talked um, offline about your experience uh, with webinars, but we're seeing this, you know, across every industry because people cannot go to conferences and seminars, they still want that information and they still want to connect and learn. And so webinars are really, really appearing as a great means to do that. And I actually am really bullish on webinars for a couple different reasons beyond even just the fact that right now a lot of in-person events can happen. With webinars, you create a piece of content that you can repurpose over and over again, right? If you think about going to your local library and talking to a room full of soon to be retirees, it can be hard to repurpose that piece of content. It's not a nicely captured video with yourself being recorded. But using tools like Zoom, like we all here are today, it's really easy to record yourself, record your screen, have people engaging, and then repackage that up and send it off to everybody as a piece of evergreen content. And you can put it on your blog, you can email it, you can gate the content. So it's a really great tactic for those reasons as well. The other thing that we've seen that we, we just think makes it really easy is, again, uh, people want to learn. And you're doing them a, a great service by actually being the host on a webinar and talking to some kind of expert. So the burden doesn't have to be on you to know everything and communicate everything. If you're capable of pulling in a connection and asking five to 10 good questions, you still provided them with a ton of value. And just a quick story. So there's an advisor I know who works actually with physicians as well, a different advisor, and he hosted a webinar. He's based in Pittsburgh but he had a uh, connection to a hospital down in Florida. And so he said when everything started happening with the pandemic to his connection there, you know, I have this really great material that is perfect for uh, people who are just starting their residency about paying off debt while also saving for retirement and different investment strategies. I'd be happy to host a free webinar event for any of the um, attendees or the residents at your hospital. And so they promoted it for him because it was an educational webinar. 300 people that he had never, ever heard of before all signed up for this webinar. He didn't have to fly to Florida and show up there, right? It was very minimal cost except for his time. And that's 300 new individuals that had never heard of his business before that now know who he is, what he can offer, you know, the knowledge and the expertise he has. So when you're thinking about how to promote it, really tapping into those that can help share that event with the right people is really crucial. 
Uh, do you, this, this image, just before we move on, I know that Sean, your team provided it, um, but this is just an example of how you can take great visuals from Y charts and use them to really hammer home a point in any of your webinars. You can, it, you guys do such a great job creating visuals that are nice and bright and easy to read on a beautiful white background. It really lends itself nicely to a slide deck. Yeah, and this, this one in particular is one we're seeing a lot of advisors use, and there, there's various flavors of it, but it basically says, let me redemonstrate you the value of staying long and buy and hold, whether you were in a 60-40 portfolio, 70-30, 80-20, look at the benefits of doing so. Um, you know, depending on your exposures, you were able to ride out the storm to different degrees with lesser downside risk, et cetera. So a lot of easy two minutes to create a chart, get it out there through a great format. You've provided value to your customer and you move on with your day. I love that. And we always say a picture is worth a thousand words. You can explain all this to someone and why it works or you just show them the chart and it makes such a difference. Mm -hmm. um, if you are looking to get started with webinars, you've never hosted one before, you have lots of questions, this link here at the bottom, how to use webinars to generate leads. It, that's a catchy title, but it also just works if you want to host them for clients. We have all the steps in place, how to promote it, where to host it, what content to use, how long they should be. So check out that article. Okay. Record a video, the third tactic. Many of you, I'm sure as you're scrolling your feed on social media, will see videos and stop to watch them. Um, many of you though are not recording those videos yourself. So the video has been around obviously for a long time, but one of the reasons that we love it right now is because in-person um, events and communication is really the stand. So clients are not for the most part meeting you in your office right now. And so being able to allow them to see your face and hear your voice and see your hand gestures, you know, it really goes a long way for your current clients to help put them at ease and to get that familiarity back but for new prospects, it's a great way to build rapport. You know, we do business with people that we like, and it's a lot easier for someone to feel that they like and know you when they can see you, hear you, all that good stuff. So it doesn't need to be scary. It doesn't need to be a high production value video. Um, I have some tips right here about even just how to record them right on your smartphone, right? So you don't need a lot of fancy equipment. Um, I'm going to show this because it's sitting right next to me, but this is a little tripod that you can order off Amazon and it has a light. So if you don't have good lighting, you can illuminate your face. You can put your phone right in here and easily record yourself talking about a topic. So recording a video is such a great way to, again, build that rapport and that connection and make, make it so that people don't feel like you've disappeared on them. They still feel like they have that connection that they're craving. You know, and w one of the things with videos that we've seen is they can be used to broadcast one video uh, send multiple times, but it's not very hard to create a short video in your free time for a specific client. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, just wanted to, you to know I was thinking about you today. I took a look at your portfolio. I feel comfortable. I just wanted to say hello. I know you're probably checking email offline and our, we may not connect schedules, just saying hello to you. It is, it, we've seen that pay enormous dividends and it took 15 to 20 seconds to record per customer. It's such a great idea. I know an advisor who does a lot of 401k um, plan setups for new companies and startups and they will record using a tool called Loom, L-O-O-M, where they'll mm -hmm. share their screen and their camera and let's say they have three different options for you know what somebody might do for setting up this 401k plan they can record themselves walking through it. So now you're not just presenting it once in a meeting, but you've recorded it. The person can watch it whenever it's convenient for them. They can replay it for their colleagues, their associates, HR. It's such a better way to go about it than asking for a meeting, coordinating a bunch of schedules, right? It's, it's seamless and it makes for um, much easier decision-making in a lot of ways because you can rewatch it a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to use video or you're just getting started with it, again, we have a blog post that you can check out that has everything you need to know about getting started with video. A lot of you will always ask, how do you add captions to video? You absolutely wanna add those captions because a lot of people watch video 
um, on social media or you know wherever they're finding that video with the sound turned off because they're in line at the grocery store or they're you know with their family and they shouldn't be on their phone. So you want to make sure you add those captions and you can use a free tool called Headliner. That's great. Maybe some of you have a different tool that you can recommend. Feel free to drop it in the comments. Um, but we also love a tool called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. So this beautiful thumbnail that you see here on the left, that is an example of a thumbnail that you can use using a tool like Canva. So it makes it a lot more engaging to share that uh, video when you have a great image over it. Okay, so social media. So many of you, I'm sure, um, raise your hand if you've ever seen another advisor or somebody on social media sharing a Y charts chart because they are getting so much love right now. Everybody I in my feed is sharing them. And I see so many people getting a lot of engagement by sharing these charts. We know that visual um, images, infographics are shared, liked, and commented on three times more than other types of posts in general. So before I jump into the four social media commandments for writing great posts, Sean, can you tell us a little bit about what you've seen of how advisors are using um, Y charts in their social media posts? Yeah, and, and maybe more broadly than just Y charts. Um, when Samantha showed the triangle up front, the purple triangle, I think the important thing to notice is your first interaction with the prospect isn't, can I have your business? Your first interaction is, here is something of value. Here's something that made you think or feel or react. The thing I love about social media and when it's effectively used by advisors is they're building relationships, personal relationships en masse with hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of people. Um, one blast a day saying, here's a funny thought I have. One saying, wow, can you believe that Tesla's market cap is greater than Toyota's or greater than the sum of all other automakers not named Toyota? Um, something like that. And then a picture that reminds people, hey, I, I am an expert in financial planning or helping you bring your nest egg to help you realize your dreams, a mix between those two is helping gradually through time with them liking you, with them thinking you are capable and put those two things together, you've built trust without ever actually meeting these individuals directly. And if you've earned, you may interact with them through social media. They may like you, they may comment, they may retweet you, which guess what? That's engagement and engagement is a nice call to action that says, maybe I will reach out to you, direct message you or LinkedIn link with you and get a dialogue started. Cause maybe in a week, a month or a year, you may, the timing may be right for me to talk to you about a commercial relationship between us. I love that. And I think one of the things that so many of you on this uh, call maybe still don't 100% think about is if you, if you, somebody were to ask you today, where do you think you could find the most um, number of ideal clients for your business, right? And you would probably say the friends or colleagues of the clients I already have are often my ideal clients because people off, often will circulate in similar social circles and hang out with people that are like them. To get access to those people, social media is a great way to do it because if you have Jim Smith, your client, and he likes your social media posts, now all of his connections have the potential to see your post because he liked it. So the more you can get people that you already work with to like and comment on your posts, the more you can get their network, people that are often like them, that are great potential prospects for your business to see your content and learn about your business as well. So that's that exponential power of social media that is so, so powerful. And, and as we all know, there's a nice quid pro quo in social media that if I like and react to your good material, you have a likelihood to like and react to my material. So it's one of those, like everything in life, give before you seek to receive. You know, hey, uh, help other people see that you valued their content. They're more likely to share their, to reinforce your content, which starts to address, as you're mentioning, their entire audience too. Yes. So let's talk about these four social media commandments real quick. Um, and I have a link at the very end here, the four things not to do, but I see these mistakes all the time. So number one, 
don't start your posts with I, my, or we. If you're going to post a new blog post that you wrote, you don't want to say, I wrote this blog post this weekend, check it out, right? You want to tell people why it's worth their time to take a minute or two and read what you wrote or watch the video you recorded. So you want to make it all about the end uh, reader or watcher, not about you. On that note, you also don't want to use passive voice. So saying things like, take a look at this study or check this out. You, again, want to use language that is impactful and powerful and really compelling. And then, of course, write for a specific audience. So we call them identifier words. If you have an article about the best time to take Social Security, if you live in, you know, the Cleveland, Ohio area, that's where my, I grew up, you can say something like Clevelanders, do you know the best time to take social security? Even though that applies to everyone, people who live in Cleveland will see that and it's an identifier word and it registers with them and they'll think, oh, this content is for people like me. So you can do that based upon location, upon your niche, but using identifier keywords is a great, great way to make sure that people are seeing your content and wanting to read it. Another example would be something like, Let's say you have an article about getting back in the job market and you work with a lot of younger families, right? You can say, were you a stay-at-home mom finally, and you're finally ready to get back in the job market? Here's five tips to ace your first interview. Versus if you work with a lot of people that are in the military and now they're transitioning to civilian life, you might say, um, veterans, are you getting ready to transition to the civilian world, here's five tips to ace your job interview. So you can take that same piece of content and repurpose it for different audiences using those identifier keywords. And then lastly, I can't stand when I see this, but it happens all the time. Don't share an article without saying why you're sharing it. That is such a big mistake. And when you do that, most people are not going to click and read it. You need to tell someone why it's worth their time. We have so much information being thrown at us. We only want to take time to, you know, look at things that we think are important for us. All right, so the last one, and then we're going to jump into um, looking at the Y Charts platform and what you can expect from that, and then we'll look at Lead Pilot, is sharing your expertise via weekly blogs. So our own research, we did a survey last year, shows that advisors who are getting 10 or more new clients per year from digital marketing, one of the top six things they had in common was that they posted regularly, at least twice a month, new original content to their website. So it helped their SEO rankings. It helped them have more original pieces to share on social media. It helped show them as an expert and a thought leader. So doing this weekly is really important. However, you don't need to write, you know, a book from scratch every single time, right? So you can use things like great visuals and images to tell a story. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a second, but imagine if you pull a great chart or two and you embed it into your blog post and then you talk about what that chart is showing and why it's important. That would make for a very compelling post. And actually, articles that have an image every once every 75 to 100 words receive on average two times the number of shares on social media as those that don't. So making sure that you include images regularly throughout your blog post is important for SEO as well as for social sharing. And this blog post that we have here, Sean, do you want to tell us a little bit about, is this from one of your users? Yeah, we have, a, this is a, a guy named Charlie Bolello who runs a, a company called Compound Advisors. He puts out five chart Friday every week. He finds five interesting charts and some of which happen to be Y charts, some of which aren't. And he says, hey, I, I'm going to cultivate some interesting perspectives for you by showing you a chart that he either created or found and giving you one or two sentences about it. It's easy, if, especially if you know you want to do this on a weekly basis, to be collecting those as your week goes along, to string it into a blog post, put one, two sentences in, and get people to subscribe to it. They love it, they're addicted to it, and they remember your name every single Friday while they learn something. I love that, and it's, and it's things like you mentioned, he's finding or sourcing, doesn't have to create them all from scratch. Mm -hmm. So those are the five tactics. Now we're gonna, we were talking about, you know, what the tactics are, giving you some ideas, but now we really wanna show you how you can accomplish them using our tools. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Sean, 
um, and show people how they can use Y charts um, to accomplish what we've been talking about. Yeah, let me just give you a few examples and maybe you can confirm you're, you're seeing a uh, screen right here, correct? I am, yes. Okay, so um, for the sake of time, I uh, saved off a few interesting charts, but this is, this is the first example. Like, y you need to be communicating now about the economy, markets, and in certain cases, certain sectors of markets. So along the lines of the economy, um, hey, there's some interesting trends going on right now about what's going on with personal income, what's going on with spending because income's different from spending. Um, and the difference between income and what you're spending ends up being savings. So some really interesting things going on in the macro economy where you see some huge line spike showing, um, wow, none of us have anything to do with our money that we may be saving right now. And those of us that are receiving unemployment insurance um, may have received some rent concessions. So the savings rate uh, has, has skyrocketed. Well, that's an interesting perspective. Um, you may want to tunnel a little bit deeper in on something like that and say, hey, for whatever reason, I've got a segment of my client base that is interested in retailers, and they may be interested in an investment sleeve uh, of retailers. Well, some really interesting, easy to use graphics around not all retailers are created the same. And again, I'm just sparking some thought here by saying food and beverages have seen a huge spike this year but it's not a good time to be an automaker and not a good time to be a department store. These are quick and easy images to create, to adjust, to change the timeline from every six months to what's happened in the last month or in the last three months on these, on these items. And the reason we didn't see anything in every month is not every one of these government statistics releases statistics every month. Um, quickly do that. Say you want to uh, download the image and you can quickly export that uh, into lead pilot or something else and blast this out into your blog post, whatever you want to do. Um, maybe I'll give a, a couple more quick examples. Yeah, um, we definitely have time for that. Okay. So why don't we look at um, market volatility versus the returns that of the S and P 500 and you're sitting there playing around in an evening and you're saying, well, what are my perspective? You start to play around with timelines and you say, how has volatility uh, fit with returns in the market? And you can see some interesting trend lines, which you can quickly put a title to that says um, volatility versus um, returns. Put a quick title on if I've typed correctly. <laughs> yeah, which I have, uh, except I didn't capitalize. Again, export it out into whatever. Or, you know, the things we do at Y Charts is we say, hey, do you want to directly tweet this out? Or do you want to post it to, talk, to stock twits? And you can quickly do what I mentioned earlier, which is a broadcast um, blast, uh, ad hoc blast, because something was interesting to you. Um, you know, another, another interesting example that we've seen from a lot of our customers is, there's some tie-ins between COVID statistics and macroeconomic factors. We happen to have created a whole bunch of uh, standard um, COVID statistics on states, et cetera. And anybody who's been paying attention has seen that Texas, especially Houston, has seen some serious uh, uh, issues with a resurgence or, or just an increased number of cases. You can quickly look into these things yourself. You can say, hey, um, I don't care to be gloomy and talk about deaths, but cases are, are interesting. And you can start plotting some lines. And once again, use that content to support whatever you are trying to communicate to your customers. I love that you added this, this data in and see the tie-in between you know, the timely current events that we're facing in, like you, you mentioned, macroeconomics. I don't think a lot of people realize that this is in here. So it's, it's great to see. Yeah. And, you know, just like maybe I'll just give you a, a final example is, there, you know, there's an awful lot of families that are talking about the FANG stocks and um, should we invest in Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, uh, or Google? Well, there's some interesting things to see if you compare the returns of these securities to the S&P 500. 
you know, you can see over whatever duration you're talking about, what has the, what have the returns looked like for these various assets? And you can see while well, the S&P 500 in the last year, let's, let's just look at the last six months. The S&P 500 is down 3.5%, but uh, this is Amazon is up uh, 54%. Some interesting things. Then the last thing I wanted to touch on real quick is um, supporting the theme of emailing your clients. We're big believers that you can put some pre-canned, regularly cadenced um, emails in front of your clients. So just to give you a quick example, we work with you quickly set up a, um, a daily market update that comes to you Here's what it's gonna look like. I just press preview, scroll down a little bit. You're gonna see it talks about US indicators. It's gonna talk about a major funds, uh, international equity markets, et cetera. Say, okay, it's blasted into your email box every day. You can take this and say, hey, I think my five of my key clients would love to have this too. And it can be just a regular automated way for you to stay in touch with your customers. I love that. So it comes to the advisor first and then they can decide who to share it with so that they're not making maybe some people more nervous or feeling like they need to watch it all the time. Correct. So in a couple minutes, those are some quick uh, examples of how quick it is to create a piece of content, export it, and then do something with it. And as Samantha said a, a few times, these types of things can be repurposed on social media, on your blog, on your video, on your webinar, or on your website same piece of content can be used in all kinds of different ways. This is great. So let's, thank you so much for that, Sean. Let's take a look now at if you are using, uh, you know, the Y charts data, how would you then go about adding it to a blog post or a landing page or a piece of content and sharing it, you know, on social media? So obviously as Sean showed us, we could do it the ad hoc way where from Y charts, you could tweet it live. But again, I know for many of you, you either need to get things pre-scheduled, you're not in there every day, you want to be consistent with your cadence, and that's where this great tool, Leadpilot, comes into play. So Leadpilot is a new tool from 20 over 10 that covers all elements of that funnel we saw earlier, right? So helping you attract, convert, delight, all the different elements. So the first thing is in Leadpilot, we have this really robust content library. You can see there's 580 pieces in here right now. Every month we add 20 new pieces, everything from stock market uh, perspectives weekly to much more what we call lifestyle content, you know, things that you might just want to push on social media. There's a mix of editorial, infographics, and videos, and coming soon we'll have interactive. And you can filter all of this content by uh, categories as well as personas. So for instance, right now, um, if we look at trending topics, we're going to see a lot of pieces about COVID-19 and working from home and all that good stuff. You can also completely compose your own pieces for distribution. So maybe you want to write a post about, you know, those FANG stocks and you want to come in here and compose it. So you would say custom content and, you know, whatever the title is going to be, you can upload your image right here directly from uh, Y charts. This isn't a thing image, but you get the idea, right? And you can start to just quickly build out a piece of content that you would then want to share. So you can either use your own or use pieces that are in our library. The great thing about the pieces that are in our library though, is that you can come in and edit any of these pieces. So I actually have an example here for you of one that I just did, uh, where is it, here we go. So let's say you have a really great chart about unemployment that you got from Y Charts, um, unemployment in the US and how it has changed over the last couple of months. And you know, then you wanna talk about how stimulus checks are um, you know, being sent to all these Americans and how people should spend them. So we already have a piece in the library, stimulus checks um, are coming for Americans, here's six things to do with yours. But you could come in, and I did already add it in here, but let's pretend I didn't, right? You can come in and say, this is great, but I want to make this a lot more compelling. Going back to that point we made earlier, that pieces that have an image for every 75 to 100 words are much more compelling and will get shared much more often. You just click that little image button, click drop image, choose your 
your Y chart chart, uh, here we go, US unemployment, and drop it right in. So now the chart is in there. Now we can save this. We can update any of the images. So if we want like the, the main image here to be changed, we can. We can also preview what it's gonna look like. And this is one of my favorite features in um, Lead Pilot. Again, we're trying to make this all as easy for you as possible. When you first set up an account with us, we're gonna help you set up a template that will have your company logo, all of your colors will be matched. You'll get this beautiful little sidebar here where you can put your picture. Every member of your team can have their own template. So if I had one, it would have my picture, my name, whatever call to action that I want. It can be a link to your calendar. It can be a risk -alize, risk assessment. It can be whatever you like. But every time you're ready to share a new piece of content, it's going to automatically add it to this style landing page. So you don't have to recreate the wheel every time. It's gonna make sharing content really seamless and easy. You can also see what it looks like on a mobile device if you like. And then once you check it and you say, yep, that looks good, I'm ready to go, you can either get your compliance PDF for pre-approval or schedule to get it shared. And again, talking about the difference in cadences, you can either post it now or schedule it for later, or even do a manual share. So all of those are available to you. And I actually already scheduled this piece. Um, so I'm gonna go back and show you what it looks like down here. And so we can see here, it is right there. You've received your stimulus check scheduled for email on this date and time. And here's some other pieces that I have set up and shared. So this piece right here, um, that is scheduled for email. I also went ahead and did a manual share so we could see it in action. So you can see you've got the big beautiful image at the top talking more about what happened. And within Y charts, they allow you to upload your branding as well. So you can see for the purposes of this demo, Sean and his team added Lead Pilot's logo to these charts. But Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys do it the same way, right? You set up that template once with the branding and then every time you deploy a chart, it's already added there for you. Correct. We also do custom colors on the lines too. So if your, uh, your business has a certain color scheme um, palette associated with it, your lines are going to come out to match that. I love that. That's beautiful. So yeah, so it makes it really, really easy now to go in and share this. So you can, again, email it out. You can share it to social media. But one of the key things about this is that now you're not just directing people to a social media post, but you're able to start capturing them and cultivating them and dripping on them. So as they read that great article and they love it and they say, okay, yes, I do want to sign up for your weekly newsletter, they will come into your back end here as a contact. Now this integrates with a lot of the tools already you're already using. So Wealthbox, Redtail, Riskalyze, and they're two-way integration. So the, the data can be fed both ways, but a couple things I just want to point out quickly. Let's say you have a lead. I'm going to use myself as an example here. If any of you want to get in touch with me afterwards, there's my email for you to use. You can click on this history and see everything that that individual person was sent, so delivered, opened, as well as clicked. So if someone's not clicking certain things, but they're getting it, right, you know that they're not as interested in those topics as the ones they're actually clicking. But even further, and I'm sure this has happened to so many of you, you get a lead. All you have is their email. You know barely anything else about them. You can have people on your team spend hours researching them. You can yourself research them, or you can just keep sending them pieces and not know what's sticking. Or you can use Lead Pilot, and within any person that's uploaded, you can click this Profile Insights button. We are going to scrape the web to find any publicly available information associated with that email address we can. So their name, their picture, where they work, what their title is, any of their social profiles, their website, what part of the country they live in, are they male or female, uh, how old are they, where have they worked in the past. This information is coming from social profiles, anywhere publicly that they uh, have a presence associated to that email. So between having all of this intel on the lead, knowing what they're reading, what they're interested in, you can really start to build a robust profile for that person that will allow you to convert them from a lead into a client much, much easier, right? And of course, all of the typical things you want to do with email marketing are available for you here too. So you can build all different kinds of lists as well as what we call smart segments. 
So a smart segment might be something like you create a segment for doctors and anybody who's got the email address Johns Hopkins or Mayo Clinic in it automatically goes on this list and you don't need to constantly be updating it. It just, the system will read all of your contacts and move them there. So it, you know, matches based on different conditions. So that's a really great feature as well. I know I'm flying through these features, but in the interest of time, wanted to just show you some of those high level ones. And then of course, you want to know what works and what doesn't. So rather than have to then separately go into LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and spend all this time looking at your analytics, we pull all the analytics into one dashboard. So you can see at a glance what you can pick one piece of content and see how that one piece is performing. You can look at everything. You can see what's giving you the most leads versus the most engagement. You can even look specifically at, you know, how one particular piece of email is performing. So really, really robust analytics at a high level or down to the person. And then the last thing, as we mentioned earlier, the cadence is really important. You don't wanna just push out pieces of content all of the time in an ad hoc manner. You wanna have a strategy. And so through our drip campaigns, we make that really, really simple. So for instance, let's say you wanted to do a campaign on LinkedIn all about the pandemic. You can come in here you can see there's all the different pieces. It tells you it's gonna be posted to LinkedIn on day one at 9 a.m. And then on day two at 8 a.m., this piece is gonna go out. So you're able to come in the same way as before. You can customize the picture. You can customize what it says. Um, you could add new platforms that you, if you wanted to, to any of these and customize those. You can add hashtags or tag people. And then once you've got it all set up the way you're ready, you can either have someone on your team approve it or start it now or add a custom start date to start it later. And if you wanna add new pieces of content, whether you wrote them yourself or you have them in the library, you simply click add another piece there, select the content from the library that you want to add and easy as pie to get it going. So again, we're making it as simple as possible for you to do this. And again, if you wanted to add the charts um, that YCharts provides, it's as simple as uploading those images that they provide to you to any of these pieces. So I see we have some questions. Um, so I wanna make sure we leave time for that. And uh, the last thing I just wanna make sure we do, let me show this really quick. Um, so we'll make sure we answer any questions, but that way if anyone um, has to leave, they get this information. Um, Y charts. If you go to ycharts.com and mention the 20 over 10 webinar, you can unlock an extended uh, two week trial. That, that's right, right, Sean? Correct. Okay. And then if you go to Lead Pilot and use either of these uh, coupon codes here, because we have both monthly and annual plans, you can get one month free. So completely risk free to try out the tool and try posting to your own social accounts, uh, you know sharing on um, or sharing emails, using the content that we have, using those two codes. So I know we're, we'll put those codes in the chat box as well, but I'll stop sharing my screen and we can answer some of the questions. Samantha, can I just point out an absolutely brilliant comment that was made? Somebody said, hey, what if I don't want to do uh, five chart Friday? Wouldn't it be easier to do two chart Tuesday? I think uh, David said that. I think that's brilliant. So I just I wanted to it. make sure we, we can all copy that. Yes, David, you're a genius. The whole <laughs> idea is to do what works best for you, 100%. Um, and, you know, if you use charts from other people, too, like if you don't just use uh, the charts maybe you see here, but maybe you're using the visual capitalists. I know they often will do really great things. You know, you can tag them. And often when you tag other creators, content creators, they will be more inclined, inclined to like, comment, or share your post and give you even more engagement. So great tool. Um, okay. I don't know if you saw any questions you want to answer. I'm going to just look through and read them while we're uh, still on. Uh, somebody was asking about compliance for wide charts. If there, I don't know if you want to speak upon that at all, or if that is something you just let each user handle. Uh, we, we do allow for some pretty robust compliance statements associated with each and every visual that is exported, but we always encourage our advisors to do their best to stay in compliance with their local and federal um, guidelines, especially if they're part of a bigger corporation. Great. 
And somebody asked about um, working with people in Canada. Do you work with? Yeah, I know our, our, our application supports all North American uh, stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, and, and we do have a presence. So yes is the answer for Y charts. Great. Uh, we got a question about, you know, the webinars and hosting a great webinar and then afterwards what you should do. So um, we have a great blog post that is linked to in the slides, but Lead Pilot would be a great tool for that, right? So you could take everyone who was in your webinar, put them in a list, and then create one of those campaigns. So it could be post uh, webinar drip campaign. I just show you this really quickly because um, I actually think I have one already set up for that purpose. Um, so you could, yeah, here we go, post webinar email drip. So you could put everybody on a list, stick them in a drip campaign, and then let's say you're talking about, you know, earning passive income in retirement, you could drip on them over a series of days using Lead Pilot. So we absolutely can help with webinars in that way. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Any other questions that stick out to you, Sean? I didn't see any, but that wasn't uh, addressed by our colleagues. Okay. Well, we can stick on for another minute or so if anyone has any additional questions. If you're looking again for a much more robust demo of either uh, tool, certainly head to our website, leadpilot.io. Uh, the Y charts, is it just ycharts.com? Dot com, yep. Okay, so ycharts.com or leadpilot.io and you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one demo with our teams um, to get all of your questions answered about the tools. And we will be sending you again the presentation and all the slides. So we, we really thank you so much for joining us today. And Sean, thank you for, for joining me. It was great to uh, present with you and learn from you as well. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you having me on. And, and my big takeaway for, for all of us is we need to improve communication. Whether you use Samantha's tool or Y charts doesn't matter. Um, neither. Improve your communication. And to the degree we can help you out, we'd be thrilled to. Yes, love it. Okay, well, thank you so much and have a great rest of the week, everyone.